One day without tech and house is boring day. Yeah, they weren't there yesterday. But yeah, they deserve breaks. Hello, good day, good day. It's a beautiful Tuesday here from Oranje Stad Aruba, Cas de Cultura, Wonderland 2, with Art Vibes. Today, it's only me, Vicky, representing Cas de Cultura. Our partner, Cream of Wu, couldn't make it today, but I have two beautiful guests, two ladies, mm -hmm. Ana Maria Hernandez and Velvet Zoe Ramos. Good morning. Bon dia. Bon dia. How are you guys doing? It's early. I'm <laughs> so um, um, tell us because um, you're especially our guest today because you have a project going on at Casa de Cultura a beautiful art exhibit tell us about this show um, well this show uh, was curated by Ana Maria Hernandez obviously and she and I communicated about this actually it was with Olga Gabriel but then Ana came in and it was just a conversation about what I wanted to show mm -hmm. because it's been 10 years since I started my career mm -hmm. as an artist. Well, I do believe that we're always an artist, but mm -hmm. officially, I guess. Yes, yes, yes. And so I have had a few works that I had shown in London. Mm -hmm. And coming back here, it's another audience, it's another... Um, feeling mm -hmm. and another culture and so on so I wanted to have the pieces speak to each other the the projects that I had in London what does it mean here mm -hmm. tell us about your London time um well I studied in London in central St. Martin's mm -hmm. I did um various uh, courses I guess and then ultimately I got a BA in fine arts mm -hmm. um and I did and it was a wonderful experience um, though I was always the stranger mm. or the Caribbean student. <laughs> oh, but, but London is so diverse. It is diverse, but not many Caribbean students uh, go for arts. Right. Um, in I don't know, in my experience at that time. Right. Um, but they, they, they did say, oh, because you're a Caribbean student, you're always going to be free exotic bird basically oh. in the in the ground so um mm -hmm. i had a lot of freedom mm -hmm. but then again i didn't have many critical uh conversations oh isn't that weird yeah it's strange um my contemporaries did have such experiences that with each other because i guess in the netherlands there's more people mm -hmm. from aruba curacao and mm -hmm. other caribbean islands mm -hmm. And um, but I had many conversations with other cultures, obviously, but um, I didn't really think critically about it. So I was pretty much a naive mm -hmm. sort of in this mm -hmm. bubble yeah. of mine. I think we all suffer from that when we go from here abroad. Tell us about you, Anna, and how you feel this uh, Zoe's experience. Definitely uh, agree with the bubble. Um, for me, it's maybe a step further because I was actually born in Colombia and I grew up here in Aruba. Mm -hmm. And I was already in a bubble of mixed cultures um, because I do feel like I am sometimes more Arubian than Colombian and sometimes more Colombian than Arubian. And then when you go to uh, Holland, it's you are just... Out, an outsider, but mm -hmm. not necessarily in a bad way. I, and mm -hmm. I do, I did realize it depends on how light your skin is and not necessarily in a very direct, mm -hmm. um, let's say, uh, racist gesture or something. But mm -hmm. there is a, um, for example, my best friend, she's also from Colombia, also grew up here. So our Dutch, our English, our, it's the same level. And I did, uh, we did talk a lot about these differences of uh, just how a bus driver treats you. 
So it is a, um, it was, it's a confrontation on so many levels that is super necessary to have. And maybe as a personal experience only, and maybe yeah. also as a, um, something that you bring to the table in a group of people. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, um, about my background and my experience in the Netherlands. So I actually started studying medicine. Really? <laughs> yes, in Costa Rica. I did like a year and a half. Um, it was really a nice time, but I felt very isolated mm -hmm. in the sense of, I mean, I did party, I did mm -hmm. have like a very mm -hmm. active social life, but mm -hmm. the content, it's so difficult to share the things you're discovering while you're studying. And I realized I was really closing off myself to the world outside because you have to be constantly in study mode. Right. Um, I mean, with art history, is the same thing, but mm -hmm. you are linking what you're reading to real experiences right um and not hypothetically um hypothetical uh, diseases or something like that right but yeah. but but how how this is a huge extreme yeah <laughs> how how come you chose after that to go for art well it was also a very uh maybe naive start because i thought okay my whole life i thought i wanted to be a doctor and then i was confronted with this and a lot of other um let's say uh, disillusionments of the study mm -hmm. of medicine mm -hmm. that just wasn't for me um, and then I was like okay what do I want to study now and since I was little I was always very creative and very into um, the arts but not in a very structured way mm -hmm. just very random mm -hmm. um, so I thought okay if I'm gonna study something and be in a school that <laughs> I matter I rather study something that I find interesting um, than just a profession that might give me a solid career because right. it's I think that that illusion of a solid career is just very damaging for a, a lot of um, young people, yeah, especially pe here. Pe yeah, people don't uh, get that you're just thrown into the world after you get your diploma exactly. and everybody is on that same... Well, look, somebody have... Um, um, they, they call it in Dutch... Um, how do you... Like little... Um, track car or something mm -hmm. like people have like uh, connections basically yeah. and they can roll into a, a job easier in certain ways but it's it's a hard world when you it have is. your diploma and you have to find a job it is and i think now after covid that become became clearer than ever mm -hmm. things that people thought were safe uh, mm -hmm. streams of income right or just that doesn't exist nothing is um let's say, guaranteed. Right. So I went to uh, the Netherlands and I studied, my, I did my bachelor in art history um, in Nijmegen because my best friend was living there, so mm -hmm. I wanted to live close to him. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, I just went to Amsterdam and um, I did a master's in contemporary art. And then I actually just started my career with an internship at Manifesto Biennial. And from mm -hmm. then on, mm -hmm. it just really solidify, solidified for yeah. me that I wanted to really make a career out of this. Because yeah. uh, it just... Every new um, uh, course that I took, every new style that I encountered or, or uh, research, it just expanded my uh, understanding of my life and my mm -hmm. place in the world mm -hmm. so much and mm -hmm. enriched my life so much that it just, for me now, it's 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 a no-brainer. Right. Where, where did you do your master's again? In uh, the... Not the view, the UVA. Ah, yeah, yeah, in yeah, yeah. Amsterdam. Okay, from Nijmegen to Amsterdam. Yes. So. Did you, were you at the Red Boat? Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah so was yeah, so yeah. I. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, we have the same alma mater. That's uh, such a nice yeah, university. Yeah, it's a beautiful place. I love it. I have great memories. Great memories. <laughs> okay, guys, tell us about Effect Through Distance. How did this come about? The title of your exposition and the contents. Well, um, as Velvet already uh uh, explained a little bit about um, the assignment for me was to look at her work and try to find a cohesive theme it's not very difficult because you really have a very clear vision velvet um, but it was really also a selection of how many works would fit in the room visually um, or aesthetically what would uh, coincide with each other and create interesting tension so what we just did were a few meetings where we were just talking about I mean Velvet did propose a list of works mm -hmm. and from then on we just talked about them and it kind of became clearer for me as time went on 
which works would uh, fit best with each other. Mm -hmm. um, also, we were in a really, uh, 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 how do you call that? Time Our, crunch. Yeah, time crunch, thank you. It was really a tight deadline. Mm -hmm. So um, at some point it was, okay, which um, themes are would really resonate with uh, the Aruban community because as Velvet also said, uh, the important uh, it was important for her to uh, place it in this context of the Aruban community. So we went on from there and I really wanted to um, be mindful of the title so that it became an invitation mm -hmm. um, so that it also really um, created the vibe of what we were trying to create in that space and but also not being too um, poetic or too abstract mm -hmm. or also be too, uh, I don't know, uh, how do you call that snobbish you yeah, know, yeah like yeah very, like, oh my God. yeah <laughs> exactly so we were playing around with some titles i remember i was sending velvet constantly like what do you think of this what do you mm -hmm. think of that mm -hmm. um and also with the team of casi cultura it, it was really finding this balance of something that was clear but also beautiful that sounded beautiful mm -hmm. and i hope and i think that this uh title really um, encapsulates uh, the the mood of the exhibition, which is to reflect on how our position against other people's suffering, and at mm -hmm. the end, ultimately, actually becomes our suffering because we're mm -hmm. a part of smaller communities, but mm -hmm. also the world. Not yeah. to sound cliche, is yeah. a big community, yeah. and to find these um, these connections between each other. So we thought affect through distance distance is something that we place and we talked about this a lot uh, velvet and i uh, we place between ourselves and this subject uh, as a defense mechanism but mm -hmm. also it's an interesting mechanism to be able to observe objectively or as objectively as possible mm -hmm. what's happening around us yeah yeah and um it's uh, super interesting um velvet what um what is whatever attracted you to these themes of uh, you know the other um, our our co-human being um, uh, suffering hunger you know what what inspired you to make that your kind of life work in your through your artistry um, what I can say is that um, my earliest memory mm -hmm. has always been my grandma's altruistic nature. So she tried to put that in me as well. When I went to study, I went to study, I wanted to study fashion, but I found it very frivolous for uh -huh, gotcha. many reasons in, in my observation. Mm -hmm. So I went into fine arts because it was just a natural expression. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, I can be an artist. So I started to ask myself, but why? Mm -hmm. What purpose mm -hmm. it has mm -hmm. um, serving my life serving other lives because my grandma always put that in me to serve others. Wow. Um, so when I was thinking about that, I was thinking how naive I am because I don't know what others feel. Right. And sometimes I don't know what I feel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So it, it, I think it came from that simple thought. And then I still, I'm still working it out. What does it mean? This multifaceted idea of, of, empathy yeah. that the world has taught us and sometimes told us not to care, to be objective, but then to care. And um, I started taking out many uh, things I've heard mm -hmm. in my growing up, like uh, saying, oh, you have to eat all your food because there's children in I don't know where uh -huh. that are going through right. hunger. And right. you're thinking, how does that Mm -hmm. What does that mean to me? Mm -hmm. So I took that also in my art. Like um, I wanted to have a purpose. I wanted to be always a conversation of what it means that I am showing this to another person, to another community. And to me, you would think that, okay, the artwork as a finished work is important. But no, it's actually the continuous conversation that we have afterwards, yeah. before, Mm -hmm. And that's, to me, important. Interessante. Can I uh, note something that I think you yes. haven't really discussed very uh, like extensively, Velvet? Mm -hmm. um, it's super funny that when we were uh, doing this research of which works uh, would go into the exhibition, we realized that we actually um, did our bachelor thesis or a thesis on the same subject, what? which was how you represent the other 
through suffering or that is suffering in a very ethical way and we had the same uh, sources or similar sources so it was really a match of this for me that that um, coming from Colombia and um, I actually did that thesis on Dori Salcedo which is also a reference yeah. for Velvet mm -hmm. it's a Colombian conceptual artist who mm -hmm. deals with uh, the violence of my country um, mm. and how do you represent that without being gratuitous gra I always forget that word but um, just being um Okay, do you it know. as neutrally as possible, in yeah, a sense. Yeah, but not neutral no, in not the sense neutral. of not awakening not, oh. emotions. But how does it become not this cheap, you know... How oh, can be respectful? Respectful, one. But mm. secondly, it's very easy to generate an emotion with a very harsh Se image. Sensationalism. Right, yes, right. sensationalism. Yeah. To yeah, be yeah. a show about right. it. Right, exactly. right, 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 right. Mm -hmm. and, and so this was something that we I discovered very uh, or I saw very clearly in, in Velvet's approach, and it was something that we were also very mindful of mm -hmm. in this exhibition. Mm -hmm. How do what do we present, um, and how do we present uh, these themes without it being like a sad show of oh come to the show and just feel sad about the things that are happening around the world because right. that does not right. generate the discussion that Velvet uh, right. was talking about. Right, because always when when we see in the news these awful images. Um, many people react like, "Why do you have to show this?" You know. So I guess that's where where you're where you're coming from, the both of you. That um, that is the cheapest, indeed, way to attract mm -hmm. audience, mm -hmm. and uh, it's not so respectful for the person that's on that image, uh, so to speak. Very, very interesting. And also not to ourselves, because then mm -hmm. we're not really engaging. With yeah, doing. we when we see a shocking image, mm -hmm. many people think, oh, that's the lesson we should learn. Mm -hmm. But that's not really our psychology. We have to see the person. And then when we see the person, we see them as ourselves. There's a problematic in that as well. Mm -hmm. But at, at some point, you do feel some responsibility as you try to connect as ourselves, as others. We are the same. Yeah. There's a responsibility created there and you can choose how to act. In my work, I do ask people, how do you act? How do you witness this? Do you stand by? Like many of us have done in past histories of war, in past histories of even today. How much of us are at distance from the problem and how can we solve it? Are we responsible to solve it? Mm -hmm. Do you want to be? So that's many questions I ask and I put it forward for people to ask themselves. Yeah. And what I like about your approach, Velvet, is that it's not um, from the standpoint of like, oh, I know how to do it. This pretentious, like, uh, let me tell you how to do it. It's just a very straightforward question, which I think you were just saying. It's so pressing, especially now with all mm -hmm. these things that are happening. Mm -hmm. I mean, me, myself when there is any disaster or any cause like I, I, I sometimes share a lot on mm -hmm. social media and lately I've stopped because it's not that I don't care it's more like is this becoming a performative act of myself uh -huh. to feel like I am doing something about it right because there are some things that are from a distance of course of course you donate and you try but is this act of of just sharing this information is it for me or is it for the cause so mm -hmm. I think it's something mm -hmm. that is very pressing for us to ask ourselves because mm -hmm. then it becomes just an empty you know gesture which is what's happening with these images right. at the beginning with uh, the discovery of, of or the invention of photography and how it got um, incorporated into uh, how we receive news and information about the world, it at some point became this, you know, uh, just ridiculous show of how many gory pictures can I show in a minute. Right, right, right. Um, um, we're going to have a respectful little pause <laughs> <laughs> to say thank you to our sponsor, Subway. Subway. <laughs> who uh, pays for this podcast to be uh, to go online um tell us is there any item of subway that both of you prefer please say cookies please say cookies oh yeah <laughs> mine <laughs> i have to i always go for the turkey uh, sandwich okay. i just love it Good. and the macadamia cookies are my 
now they have like a cheesecake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The raspberry cheesecake. I yeah, think. yeah, oh yeah, my yeah. God. I heard. Yeah, I heard. that's that's a winner for me. You can always come <laughs> with cookies. <laughs> 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 we have Kevin here. Is uh, he's getting emotional over cookies? <laughs> oh, Don't cry, I Kevin. don't know. I think he's laughing Don't because cry. you <laughs> said cookies, cookies, and cookies. Anything for Subway, man. <laughs> <laughs> Velvet. Do you do you I go to Subway? I do. I like the salads, actually. I love them, too. I like the options that you can put on the salad. Yeah. It feels so refreshing. Yeah. And I do like the soups. I think yeah. they're a neat snack sometimes when you just want a soup. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're delicious. I, I, my go-to is always a wrap. And lately, I'm, uh, I'm repeating the quinoa. Mm. The quinoa wrap. Oh, it's that's so I tried that one. good. Oh. It's amazing with all the toppings and the avocado, the oregano and pepper. It's amazing. Thank you, Subway. Look at their Facebook page for their weekly and daily specials. Eat fresh and have it your way. <laughs> so, Vicky, I, I had a question actually for the <laughs> ladies. Mm -hmm. um, do you, are you guys sure you, you, you don't like um, share like a room or something or like a secret room? Because y'all have this chemistry <laughs> oh. when it comes to setting up because us as the oh, techs wow. well, from Casi Cultura when yeah. we were helping setting up this expo mm -hmm. it was like they had this coherence like they, they mm. it's like if one of them wasn't there and the other one was there there was always something to do. Do you guys share like some kind of? It's like you guys share a brain or something. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's an uh, that's a good compliment, I think. Yeah. Uh, wow. Alton, wow. I think we did our best. I think it was, um, if I may say so, um, we were so focused on just creating a good show. And from my part, it's not just like um, how do I position myself as a good no a mm -hmm. curator. It's mm -hmm. more like how can I. Uh, do justice to uh, Velvet's work mm -hmm. and for it to really um, be not pretentious because mm -hmm. I think that's what the, our, mm -hmm. our main goal mm -hmm. in the arts to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. really um, show that art is not pretentious it's just yeah. it can be pretentious yeah. as everything as music as everything yeah. so maybe that was it we were really uh, in a lot of communication also because of the time crunch so we mm -hmm. were constantly communicating mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I think it was also really nice to have this um organic um, discussion because the layout of the exhibition changed a lot mm -hmm. uh, throughout uh, the month, one mm -hmm. month, which mm -hmm. is very short yeah. for it to change so much. Um, but I think that's it, that we were just really uh, focusing on that. Yeah. I think that we were adapting as well. Mm -hmm. um, but we had a focus, as, as you said. Uh, I think there was a respect, respect for each other and mm -hmm. respect for the people that were helping us, you mm -hmm. technicians. Exactly. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. awesome working with yeah. you guys as well. Thank you so much, really. And it was oh, I thought it was a headache. <laughs> 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 and trying as well not to make a fuss about everything, you know, things will work out. Super. They will come together at some point, you know. Yeah, we are so happy to hear it. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm I, I have to compliment all of you because the process went like are they even here? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's uh, it it went really smoothly and uh, um, yeah. Well, I I hope more like this to come. You know, uh, Anna, <laughs> we have four expositions to go next year. The series is called Aua Ex Exhibits Twenty One Twenty Two. Aua is the code for Aruba. You know, mm -hmm. so uh, we thought of something like that being. Um, um, look, a, a big um, project in this local kind of context, but with an international kind of allure. Mm -hmm. So uh, UA being the code for Aruba, you know, internationally, we were like, yeah, that's uh, that's a good start point mm -hmm. um, for later the exposition space, the gallery space. And um, I think it gave a little bit of a... Um, I don't know. It's a, it, it's kind of like a cre credible kind mm -hmm. of a um, um, title because we have the Mondrian fonts to thank for. Also, we have Prince Bernard fonts to thank for, um, Departamento de Cultura, and of course our whole team mm -hmm. um, that's that are gonna make all of these five expositions possible. So um, uh, we're off to a terrific start. That's great to yes, hear. <laughs> yes. And now let all the tourists come. <laughs> and the locals, and obviously. The locals. Yeah. This, this is, a, 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 I stand by what Ata says, that an Aruba that you love living in is a Aruba that people love to visit. Absolutely. So, so. so, so what else? Um, how did you guys um, experience the opening night, the soft opening night? 
I love that we had, well, I had people that have taught me come, um, not only in the arts, but also spiritually come. And mm -hmm. I felt very proud to be able to show that. And also I, I thought, oh, how wonderful. I, I feel validated. I know mm -hmm. that's not really supposed mm -hmm. to be validation by other people, but I did feel validated as an artist mm -hmm. here in Aruba, mm -hmm. I say I've worked yes. hard for this. Yes. Yes. And it means something and it still means something um, now that I'm showing works that are almost 13 years old. Wow. Wow. And then people saying, oh, wow, now I get it. Now mm -hmm. I get why you're so keen on doing this thing. Why are you, why are you using this material? Mm -hmm. And also, I uh, met some new people mm -hmm. that I love the feedback they had. Mm -hmm. it, it's always very good. Nice. Tell us about the walking installation that was Lupita. Oh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Lupita that was a Bernabeu. Move. <laughs> An inspiration walking. She's, well, she's been my teacher, my student. She's been <laughs> my, she's been a friend and a supporter. Um, throughout the years I've been here, back here in Aruba. Mm -hmm. I've admired her from far, and, and now she's my friend, and she's always, she understands <laughs> um, what I want to say. I had her for my wearable art ex, um, wearable art workshops I did at Atelier Sochentinueve, mm -hmm. and she was a model for me, and she would just mm -hmm. take on these mm -hmm. works mm -hmm. that I had and just make it alive. Wow. So, um... I had a, a work called um, um, Intrinsic Implosions. It was a wearable art collection. Mm -hmm. And one of the pieces was actually worn by Natusha Cruz. Mm -hmm. And she was performing on the stage with uh, a bunch of eggs, mm -hmm. <laughs> shells, <laughs> which is part of the... <laughs> yeah, and she was doing a performance and she was wearing this uh, piece and... I wanted to recreate that because I felt that that was something um, to represent my my relationship with my grandma. I, I still don't know what it is, but she understood it. Uh, Lupita, when she came in, she understood and she told me, no, I want to wear the, the mother and child dress, which is a recent um, wearable art collection. And she just... She wore it and it was just fantastic. I said, okay, let's do the eggs, let's do the mud. And, the, and she's like, yes, I love the process and let's put this in my head. And we did this character of, uh, it was a conversation of our ancestors, my grandma's words, my my feelings towards her. And she got um, uh, a poet, um, I remember her name. Uh, Olga Buckley. Olga Buckley, who did an awesome reinterpretation of one of my like, reflections into a haiku. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, oh, this is, a, it was a collaboration. So yeah, beautiful. <laughs> it was a collaboration. Beautiful. For people uh, in the backstage, um, they used our offices to dress uh, Lupita. I do and appreciate there was, her, there, there was uh, some wonderful mud in our office to be cleaned on Monday. But oh I love God. it. It's all about the process, and I, I, I support that. So. That was nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Nice yeah. souvenir. I, 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 We should have taken some pictures of the, the muddy footsteps. Yeah. Now, hearing all of this, I didn't know that all of these details were on Friday, because Friday yeah. night I didn't come back in. You'll see the yeah. pictures. You'll see the you pictures. <laughs> <laughs> no, but talking about a wonderful collaboration, mm -hmm. Lupita and Velvet, it was a matter of, it was on the day of yeah. the of the soft opening. Yeah. And Velvet just told me, okay, I'm not going to be available for the next few hours. So from this time on, I'm going to be in the room mm -hmm. if there is anything. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay. Uh -huh. So we were doing our thing. And, and when the, sh the show came mm -hmm. on and uh -huh. Lupita and Velvet were doing the performance, it was like, wow, how did you do that? And like, what three hours yeah, yeah it was yeah. crazy crazy yeah, 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 yeah. magical i uh, beautiful beautiful um what else can can we can we tell the public i wanted to actually jump on that point of feeling validated mm -hmm. um i think that's a very i understand why you're a bit uh, hesitant in saying it but 
I mean, the context in Aruba is that there isn't really an understanding of these creative industries. It's a term that's being used now so mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. so often, but yes. also very casually. Yeah. And I think that one of the main questions is always, okay, what is then art? And why can we not put uh, people who work in the craftsmanship industry mm -hmm. next to, uh, mm -hmm. for example, what Velvet does? Because mm -hmm. Velvet's work mm -hmm. also has this... this um, a nuance of, of crafts yes, yes. um, amongst other nuances. And I think that um, it's very important to not to be a snob, but to really define these things um, in a way because you, for example, I always use the example of writing. You can have a person that is an amazing blogger, an mm -hmm. amazing journalist, mm -hmm. but that doesn't necessarily compare it with uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez, for example. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's not a matter of who's best, but it's just different expressions, different, um, yeah, different forms. Mm -hmm. And I think that um, the series, um, or at least that's one of my goals, is to really show why um, you put velvet in an exhibition like this and not a very talented uh, person that is doing crafts. Um, right. That doesn't mean that they're not valuable. It's right. just a different expression. Mm -hmm. um, and f I was really pondering this whole week, what makes uh, an art or an artist for me um, what it is. And it's this, um, you don't necessarily have to go to art school for me, in my opinion, to mm -hmm. be an artist, mm -hmm. but I it's agree. this constant search of how do I refine, how do I articulate yeah. Yeah. a yeah. question? Because yeah. that's what art is for me. It's just this very um, in-between space of um, where you combine uh, technology, uh, science, philosophy, and how do we, it's a lab, it's a yeah. mini lab. Yeah. And yeah. I saw that very clearly in Velvet's work and that's uh, a reason, one of the many reasons I admire Velvet and Velvet's work so much. Mm -hmm. It's because it's so, it's there, yeah. this, this, yeah. this question, this, this way of searching for answers are, or questions that are very common and not that it's not like why in the 1800s did people think this no it's why do i look at a picture of somebody suffering and why do i feel the way i feel about it and why do i decide to post on social media or not for example right 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 i um when i personally visit museums abroad um i don't know what it is in an art piece but sometimes i am moved to tears you know and um but when i analyze I, uh, to me, uh, the artistic or being an artist means painstaking work. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's mantle, if it comes out of your hands, mm -hmm. it shows just painstaking work. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it can be expressed through the, um, um, the object itself, let's say, mm -hmm. but um, simple. Uh, int or intricate, mm -hmm. you know, it's all about this uh, this whole process of thinking about mm -hmm. coming to this thing that is never a, a easy road, I th mm -hmm. I believe. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with you with that. It's like the constant search, the thinking, mm -hmm. the, the research mm -hmm. um, when you come to uh, at end of look or mm -hmm. at the end of the day a piece, right? I mean, a, a, cra a person who's doing craftsmanship, mm -hmm. they also put a lot, a, a of, lot time of time and, and hours. Yes, yes, yes. But it's like if you bring if uh, if you bring that object mm -hmm. into a discourse, mm -hmm. it can be a personal discourse or mm -hmm. a communal discourse mm -hmm. where you're where you're really putting it in. A, I can be making like these traditional small houses of Arabian houses, uh -huh. and that would be like amazing, beautiful. I did a lot of research, blah blah blah, um, and a lot of time, and it's precious. But once I put that in a context of like why. Uh, was this archi archi architectural expression um, very similar in A, B, or C to the Caribbean mm -hmm. um, expressions? Like, mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know, when you put it in a different discourse, then yeah, for me yeah, it yeah, becomes yeah. a piece that, um, that is art with a capital A, which yeah. again doesn't mean it's better or that not speaks. better. But yeah, it's, yeah. it's a tool yeah. for me yeah. for communication and learning. Yeah, Velvet, um, about the eggs. <laughs> <laughs> Coming back to the eggs. <laughs> Tell us what what the, uh, I saw in San Nicolas at the first art fair. I think you had a whole installation in a kitchen with eggs and mud. I believe also. Mm -hmm. um, what what do the eggs mean to you? Uh, the eggshells 
eggshells. Yes. Yeah. Well, I can think of many things, but it, it was a byproduct of what I was working in my my family's bakery. So I had a, I saw a lot of waste, and I was very oh. conscious of waste and the reusage of this waste. So eggs are li- a life is made in an egg right and the shell is a protection Mm -hmm. and it's been broken and it's so fragile yeah but then again it's so nutritious yeah for the next um i guess stage of life um so uh i i love that about (laughs) eggs and i I do love eggs Mm -hmm. as well to eat (laughs) (laughs) i know i am I'm a contradictory. I, I I value the life inside of it, and I also Want really to eat like it. to eat it. Um, <laughs> we're doing our best. We're, we're only for breakfast and making cake, but uh-uh. you we're wrong. It's a like that probably most di- most That's diverse. Art, That's thing art for you. Have. <laughs> no, but um, it, in symbolism, I guess it it, it was this mass eggs because you probably saw it mass hidden in a drawer or being trying to be hid in a drawer like this brokenness you try to hid and uh, the mud was frustration but it also was like you know the feeling of of life under under something but being thrown on a wall so that oh. was a very quick installation i can say yeah yeah yeah, yeah quick yeah, yeah. and that Inform the rest of my work. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. It was uh, a, a bit shocking to me because I think you had some uh, a mannequin also in the room. I had a bride. Yeah. <laughs> a bride. A bride. It was a bride. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. No, interesting. I, I love that. It, it, yeah. No. No, that's folks. that's true. No, I I am speechless because I I I just love this conversation and this process and the thoughts behind everything. Um, Anna, what else? What what? How can we close off this uh, with a beautiful message? Or um, tell us. Well, um, I, you were telling me about the question of favorite albums or songs. Yes, I like that idea. This as is well. Cream's <laughs> favorite question. <laughs> so, in honor wait, wait, of. Let me do that. Okay, so, go ahead. Anna, what is your favorite album or music or artist? Um, well, lately I rediscovered this album by Al J, which is called An Awesome Wave. And not to sound pretentious, but this, the, the melody and the music in itself, it's just really killer. But I started for some reason researching each song and it just became like an art piece. Each of them, it, it just became very clear to me that these these musicians are just artists painting with music and sound. It's wow. super recommended. How is the Al J? Al J and oh. the album is called An Awesome Wave. Okay. There is one song that's called Blood Flood uh-huh. and it's about the the panic and the feelings that you feel when somebody's about to punch you in the face. Wow. But it's such a beautiful song. Wow. It's you hear the heartbeats and it just really affects you. I get goosebumps oh. talking about oh, it. Oh gosh. So. Gotta go check it out. Okay. Oh wow. Okay. okay. And and Zoe, Velvet. Uh, well, I'm not a very musical person, mm-hmm. and this surprises people. I don't <laughs> listen to music often. It can be months. Oh wow. But I have songs that I like since I was twelve or something. Uh huh. <laughs> Uh, no, no. <laughs> but I do like this artist called Rachel Yamagata. Her early album which I still listen constantly and annoy my family with. <laughs> oh. And um, Brooke Fraser with her album Flags was an inspiration that I, const- uh, that I constantly listen to um, when doing um, The Feast. Mm-hmm. So you can actually see some of her lyrics written in some of the pieces. Oh. So uh, I do like them. And then recently I just like the dramatics of Prince uh, Purple Rain. I don't know oh, why. Oh, yes. But I know. When I want to get this dramatic feeling in me, I just... <laughs> uh, um, um, a beautiful uh, thing of Prince is the original Nothing Compares to You. I, I really oh, yeah. recommend that. Okay. Yeah. It's his, the first version that he, he sang. It's uh, amazing. It's, yeah, sweeping. <laughs> Anyway, uh, lately I'm into ABBA because ABBA released new songs <laughs> after 40 years. Wow. 
<laughs> so um, the first night I, I had the pleasure to hear them, I cried and cried and cried and cried and cried. So that's just the, the, the power of music for yeah. me. Yeah, It's so beautiful when yeah. it really moves you. Yes, yes, yeah. yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, listen, we're going to wrap it up. Um, I'm so thankful for your presence today, Velvet and Anna. Thank you for the invitation. Um, you're welcome, most welcome. Uh, we invite the public to come and watch Affect Through Distance, Afecta Cu Distancia, the first in a series of five expositions called the AUA Exhibits 2122, um, open till October 21st. And um, next year, we'll have the next four um, exhibi exhibitions. And for sure, Anna will be here with the artists uh, talking about them as well. Um, so this was today's Art Vibes. Uh, we're in September 2021 from um, Casa Cultura Aruba Orionstadt. Thank you, Kevin, Elton, and Omar, our techs. Welcome, and <laughs> see you at the next Art Vibes. Bye.